we are about to begin. Please take this opportunity to pull out your smartphone so you can like, share, and check in on our social media platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And please use the hashtag NowChurch. Thank you, and enjoy today's service. Stand up on your feet and put your hands together. Happy Mother's Day, mamas. Where would we be without you, yeah? <laughs> Keep them going. Tell the person next to you, I'm so glad I get to worship next to you today. Tell them, tell them. Yeah. Check it out. When night has fallen, it's coming, still you're calling me, yeah. When faith is lost and my hope exhausted, you will be my strength, yeah. When my mind says I'm not good enough, God, you're enough for me.
right, all right. Good morning and happy Mother's Day again. Hey, listen, we are glad that you're here. If you're watching us online, we're glad that you are also watching. We're all participating together. We're excited about what God is doing here in this place. And one of the things that we've been doing this last, of course, this last week, if you were here with us, it was our Heart for the House Sunday. And so we said that we were going to let you know how things turned out uh, with our offerings coming in. Let me just tell you, it was a miracle, amazing miracle. Come on. And listen, if you didn't watch on Wednesday night or you weren't here for prayer, then you might not have seen it. So I'm not going to tell you. You have to watch online. <laughs> Pastor Richard, Pastor Gail, they have a special announcement that they put out. So it is on Facebook Live. You can check it out. But they wanted to celebrate everything. And so I want you to hear it from them. But we just had an incredible breakthrough. And speaking of breakthroughs, one of the things that we did is we filled out all of these prayers, Heart for the House prayers. So as people prepared, they prepared their offering to exercise their faith. And they also wrote out, wrote out some prayer requests. And our pastors are praying for these prayer requests. The reason I'm telling you this is there may be some of of you that somehow missed it last week and I don't want you to miss the moment because we believe that God is stirring we're stirring our faith together as a church and we're believing God for just multiple miracles to break loose in this place and I don't want you to miss that so make sure the ushers have these cards that you can fill out and just prepare prepare an offering something that moves you and you're giving this offering to God and you're also lifting up these prayer requests, and we're believing God. I want to pray for all of you today that have prepared and that you're participating in this. I want to believe, God, that we are positioned to receive miracles. And what I mean by that is sometimes we don't see them because our spiritual eyes aren't open. I want to be at the point where we're just, our, our, we're poised and we're just looking. Like, where is it at? I know it's coming. It's right around here somewhere. It's about to break loose. That's faith. So let's just pray this morning. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity of receiving in your miraculous power, coming into our lives, invading into what looked like impossible situations and turning them around. Lord, we pray that you would answer these prayers in ways that cannot be explained by reasoning or circumstance. We believe, Lord, that you would move miraculously and that when you do, that all people see it, including ourselves, that we give you the glory because you are the one that answered our prayers. And we give you praise today in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, let's celebrate that. We seal that with our appreciation and our hand clap of praise. Listen, we're glad that you are here to Now Church. Maybe you're new or maybe this is your first time. We always want to make sure that you feel welcome here. We have a welcome center out front, an information center. If you did not see that on your way in, you will on your way out. It's right out in the uh, open area out front. If you go by there, we have some gifts for you. We want to bless you for coming and thank you for coming. And also, since you're here, if this is your first time, you've already accomplished something amazing. It's called a three-week challenge, and you've got week one down. Three week challenges, check out Now Church three weeks in a row and see what God does because we believe you're here on purpose and God has something for you today. But check it out three weeks in a row and just see how he starts working this in your life. We also are wrapping up Next Steps. It's a four week course that we offer during second service. So I'm just encouraging you, if you have not been to Next Steps, what it's about is helping you grow in your relationship with God. We want to do everything we can to help you be strong in your relationship and know him and know what it means to have him work through your life. Today is the last week or the last uh, class of that four weeks. So I'm going to encourage you, if you're here for a service, prepare next, next week, second service. We're going to start again called Decide No God. It's a great time to connect with him. Right now, we're going to continue on in worship. You ready? Yeah, we are. Man, I'm so glad you guys are here today. You know, it's really cool to me that our God is known in so many different ways. He's healer. He's provider. He's our defense. He's our strength. But there's a great word in the Bible, I guess it's a, an Old Testament, not Old Testament, but a Hebrew word. It's the word Jaira. Somebody say Jaira. And Jaira is an attribute of God. It's a name where it declares that he is not just a God who is enough, but he is more than enough. Somebody say he's more than enough. Yeah. 
and I'd love to know the, yeah, 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 you can put your hands together. That's a good place. That's who we're talking about. And I love being able to declare that whatever it is that we need, that he's provided already, it's already waiting for us. So just say that with me one more time. Say, Jesus, I thank you for being a provider. And tell him, I call you Jireh. You are more than enough. If you mean that and believe it, could you put your hands together one more time? We're going to show you a new one today. be more love than I am right now wasn't holding you up so there's nothing I can do to let you down it doesn't take a trophy to make you proud I'll never be more love than I am right now sing it Sabrina So I wouldn't drown You've never been closer than you are right now Oh, here's the chorus, and it's great You are Jaira You are enough I don't want to forget how I feel right now on the mountaintop. I can see so clear what it's all about. Hey, so stay by my side when the sun goes down. Don't want to forget how I feel right now. I know you're learning to be sing with the Shira. I don't want to forget how I feel right now on the mountaintop. I can see so clear what it's all about. So stay by my side when the sun goes down. Sing 
that with us now. I'm already loved. I'm already chosen. Yeah, I know who I am. I know what you spoken. I'm already loved. Yeah, more than I could imagine. That is enough. close your eyes and lift your hands all over this building now if you're watching by way of live stream there's nothing too hard or too big for our God Jireh the one who always provides you provide healing God you provide hope today you provide direction today you provide peace today so we receive that God with our hands lifted high but we are in a posture of surrender but we're also in a posture of receiving thank you God that you are more than enough sing that with me one more time say Jireh you are enough Now, church, can you sing that with us last time? Sing Jaira, you say, say Jaira, you are. Man, you guys are quick learners. Sing it again. Say Jaira, you are. Said I will be, and I will be content in every. You are Jaira. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Our God is enough. Sing the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. 
make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. You know it, right? Singing Amen all over the room. Singing Amen. appropriate song for today I all you mothers raising generations yeah, yeah together the Lord bless you yeah the Lord bless you and keep you make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you the Lord turn his face toward you and give you. Can you sing a blessing over your family? Singing Amen. We're singing Amen. Yeah. Amen. 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 upon you in a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children sing that with me may his favor may his favor come on be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children one more time may his favor may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children come on can you sing that church you say you say may his favor may his favor I love this church. Sing it over your families one more time. May his favor be upon you. May his favor be upon you. Woo. You ready, team? May his presence say, may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within in the morning, say, in the morning, in the evening, and you're coming, and you're going, and you're weeping, and rejoicing, he is, he is for you, say, he is for you, 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 he is for you. children and yes may his presence go before you say may his presence go before
the Lord bless you and keep you and make a space shine upon and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his Oh, choir, you sound great. Oh, you got to put a smile on your face. You're speaking the blessings over generations. Come on over to your families and your children and their children. And come on, generations that come are going to be blessed because of you. One more shout of praise. Hallelujah. Woo. Amen. Are you glad you came to church today? Turn off those lights if you would. And I just want you to do me a favor. Look at somebody who you did not drive to church with and just make sure they know that you are glad that you get to be here together today. Alright, good morning everybody and happy Mother's Day. Right now we are going to bless our moms. If you came in uh, and came through the front, you saw that there was some registration out there for all of our moms. Aren't our moms incredible warriors, incredible women of God? And so we are glad. And Nancy, if you'll step up here. Right now, Nancy was helping us outside, and she was getting everyone registered as they came in. And so she has an app that randomly picks the names. And right now, oh, my gosh, uh, can you help me right now and go get all of the gifts? I came up here without gifts. They're right in the study. All of those bags of gifts, please. Thank you. And you have to run because I'm on the spot. Okay. We have a lot of stuff happening today. So, but again, thank you, moms. Where would we be without you? We would not. Thank you, Captain Obvious, for that. Yes, okay. But, uh, but we're just excited. We have some great stuff planned. And so we have three gifts available today during our first and then again during our second service. And so first off, I have this gift, third place prize. Are you ready for this? Third place prize, I know what this is, I'm just looking it up just to make sure, but it is, third place prize is $25 to Chicken Salad Chick. Ooh, okay. So let's see, so she is randomly drawing, third place is? Diana Meredith. Diana Meredith. Come on up here, Diana. Where's she at? Oh, there she is. Come on, come on, I'm gonna have to move on now. So uh, here she moves across here and I have some game show music playing in the moment and everyone clapping. There you go, give it up for her, very good. Second place, second place Mom's Day gift is $50 at Target. Yeah, see, you're like, I like the way this is going. Okay, what is this? Amanda, Amanda Meal, where are you at, Amanda? Come on, Amanda, that's awesome. Good. Are you ready to have fun with that? Okay, are you gonna spend it on your kids or you? Oh, okay, hopefully she spends it on herself, okay. And then first place prize, drum roll pre please, thank you. Okay, first place is $100 to Marshalls or Home Goods. Ooh, yeah, it's getting exciting in here. Okay, who's this? Emma Maxley, Emma Maxley, Emma Maxi, 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 Emma Maxi. Oh, there she is, Emma. Hey. Were you expecting anything like, anything like this today? Well, how nice. Look at this. You're ready to go on a shopping spree. Oh, that's great. Well, happy Mother's Day. I love that. That's fantastic. Let's give it up for all of our moms right now. Come on, you can do better than that. Give it up for the moms this morning. Awesome. Happy Mother's Day to all you moms. Thank you for all you do. Seen and unseen, all the sacrifices is just incredible. Now, I don't know if you notice behind us or behind me, but this is a beautiful screen. When you say, this is, some of the guys are like, I want that in my house. That'd be great, right? 
Just so you know, this is a brand new LED screen, $70,000 given to Now Church. Isn't that amazing? Our media company, Proton Media Group, that was birthed out of this church, uh, connected with Imagine Screens, and this is basically a showroom for different groups around the area that we can showcase their product. And they said, you know what? We want to bless you guys with a brand new screen. So just to show you a little bit of what it can do, check out this video. you see the detail, the color in the screen? Isn't that nuts? Just incredible. Come on, I think we should give God just a big thanks, because that is just awesome. Incredible, incredible. Awesome, guys. Again, happy Mother's Day to all the moms. I'm so glad to be here, and our pastors are on a much-deserved sabbatical this month. So when you think about them, which hopefully is often, please pray for them, cover them, and just just uh, ask that God would just be good to them and bless them because haven't they been great to us? Yeah. Our pastors, Pastor Richard and Pastor Gail, are just the best. So let's, let's give them a, just some love. Let's show them some love if they're watching, you know, or when they watch this. Just incredible. Come on, that's our pastors. Let's show some love to our pastors. I, I would not be where I'm at today without our pastors. So... Pastor Richard, Pastor Gail, Mom, Dad, I love you. Thank you so much for all that you do. Love them so much. Uh, last week, Pastor Richard kicked off the series, uh, which you can see behind me, Get in the Game. Um, and he shared a couple of points. He said, four outsiders with nothing to lose can change the world. And that God transforms misfits into mavericks. Love that. And those who people view as outcasts the Lord often forms the potential to become heroes. So the life of faith is not a spectator sport, but get in the game. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we invite you once again to move in this place. We thank you for all that you're doing and going to do. And thank you for the opportunity to bring the word this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. To get into the game, we have to know what equipment we're using and what we're playing with. Growing up, I played baseball from Little League all the way to about 10th grade. And the very first thing that they taught me was about the equipment we were using, about how to open a glove and catch the ball so it doesn't whack you in the face. Very important. They talked about cleats. They talked about uh, the, 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 the way you wear your socks, the different things. The way that they do things is very specific. And it helps when you're in the game. And so we're going to talk about the life of faith and the equipment we use when it comes to having a spiritual walk and how to be strong. So we're going to break it down real quick. What is faith? What is faith? This is my first point. Romans 10, 17. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Did you catch that? Yes. Faith what? Faith what? That's right. Faith comes by hearing. hearing. So faith is active. Did you know it's moving? That it only comes when it's activated. And it's activated by when people speak or preach the word of God. And so you have to understand that it's moved by you pulling on the word. 
So every time that you come into a church or if you're listening to a podcast, whatever it might be, when you're actively listening and pulling on the word, Jesus always would say, he who has an ear, let him hear. Why? Because he's saying, activate your faith. Stir up your faith. Get ready to see something happen. So when the word is preached, we pull on the word so it stirs our faith to do something. Because there's action required to activate your faith. Second, second thought is this. Faith is active. The Bible says that we walk by faith. We don't sit by faith. We don't lay down in our nice big beds by faith. We don't, we don't just casually walk. We don't just casually do things. It says we walk by faith. So in other words, we're on a journey, right? We're going from one place to another. We're on a journey because we're walking by faith. Our faith is growing and getting stronger and getting greater so we can see God do things in our lives. Because here's the thing, God says, I've got this for you. If you could only imagine and see the beauty I have for you, I've got these amazing things. And on the other side, the enemy is like, no, you know what? You're good right here. Hasn't God blessed you enough? Don't you think you make enough? Don't you think you're okay right now? Don't you think it's all right? And he's sitting here tugging back at you, keeping you back from what God's saying. Listen, I've got this for you. So here you are, you're trying to, you're coming to church and you're starting to walk by faith and then you're getting some resistance. You're like, okay, I guess I'm okay right here. And we can get comfortable. But faith is action. And it's busting out of the old and saying, no, I know God's got more for me. Even though everything around you say, you know, you're good. Maybe you grew up in a family that says, you know what, this is good enough. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. But for me, there is something about when I... When certain things were surrounding me, there's something inside me saying, there's more. I couldn't explain it. All I knew was God put something in me and said, there's more. And I remember coming to this church and it opening my eyes to a whole new world of faith. And when I, when I stepped in this place, they started speaking about, man, these are things you can do. And opening up a whole new world. And they started talking about missions trips. I thought, man, this is awesome. None of my family had ever been out of the country before. I said, why not me? But the enemy was sitting there tugging. You, you, what do you think? Who do you think you are? And God said, I got this for you. Come on, come on, TK. I got you, I got you. And the enemy's like, no, he's speaking in my ear. No, what, what, do you, what do you think you're doing? Where are you going? Who do you think you are? And it tries to intimidate you from what God has for you. So we have to walk by faith. We have to push through. I've been coming to church here for 23 years now. 23 years. And every time I sat in these chairs before these chairs, purple chairs. When I sat here, God spoke to me. He would do something. He would share something that Pastor Richard, Pastor Lindsay, or Pastor Gail, or Pastor Chris would share something. And, and every time I was pulling on the word, guess what? I found something. Every time. No matter what they're sharing, I was there expecting, God, what are you going to say to me today? God, I'm pulling on this. I'm ready because faith is active. You, you know, we can come into this room, all of us, every week and hear the same word and people are getting something and other people are like, oh, okay. I'm sorry. Where is your active faith at? Where, where, what's your expectancy? What are you expecting God to do? It's not about me or Pastor Richard. He, he's preached filet mignon sermons like better than Ruth's Chris. Like, oh my gosh, those were awesome. And some people are like, eh, I've heard better. That's great. But those of us that are pulling on that word, pulling on the gift that Pastor Richard has and our pastors have, it's like, okay, yeah, baby, bring it on. Oh my gosh, I needed that word. And it stirs and activates our faith. Amen. So, so what is God speaking to you today? What is God speaking to you today? Because I'm telling you, 23 years, there were dreams that I had. There were thoughts that I had. There, there were things that I would just think were pipe dream. And I, can I tell you, standing here now on the other side of seeing my faith grow and seeing God do things, can I tell you, things that were a dream are now a reality. I'm walking in things that I prayed for. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm just, I'm blown away just seeing the goodness of God because I believed, because I chose to walk even when it wasn't easy, guys. There's times when you got calluses and you're bruised and you're hurt and sometimes you're kind of limping, kind of funky. I'm going, man. And you feel like you're beat up from every side because we're in a war. 
Because the devil does not want you to have all that God has for you. I don't know if you realize that or not. There is an enemy. He is real and he hates our guts. But we have a savior who says, I've got you. I've defeated him. Just remember that and walk on his face on the way. Boom, boom. I'm going. That's what faith does. Faith is active. We have to get in the game because number three, faith is a risk. You don't know what your faith can do, can do until you get out of your comfort zone and get into the game. You don't know what your faith can do. You know, it's interesting. I, I'm going to talk about this real fast, but a lot of us know this story of Peter walking on the water. And we think, that's pretty cool. Peter walked on water. But I was thinking about this from the opposite perspective. There was 11 other people sitting in the boat. 11 of Followers who saw Jesus do amazing things see Jesus just like Peter walking on the water. And Peter says, hey, come. Why didn't the other 11 say, I want to do that? They were chickens and sitting in the boat. The only thing that they could say is, look at what Peter did. They couldn't say, look what I did. I walked on water as well. But they were sitting in the boat, chickens, because they didn't risk their faith. And the thing is, you won't be able to walk on the water until you put your faith to the test and you step out where God's telling you to step out. Because he walked on the word because the word is Jesus and he said, come. So Peter believed in the word and he stepped out of the boat and he began to walk. So where is God calling you? Maybe you've been comfort, comfortable where you're at and God's saying, come. It's time for you to step out of the boat. It's time to take a risk. So do you know that it's, a, it's possible to have faith that can move mountains and not put it to use, it's sitting there dormant, waiting to get activated. So you can have this amazing faith and it does nothing in your life because you don't ever activate it. My favorite car is a Ferrari. And if someone gave me the keys to a Ferrari to drive, I'm not just gonna stare at it and be like, isn't this beautiful and take a whole bunch of selfies. I'm gonna open that joker up. I'm gonna get in the driver's seat. I wanna see what it can do, right? Your faith is the same thing. It's sitting there and you've got the keys. You've got to get in the driver's seat and start that puppy up. Oh yeah. Let's go and see where it takes you. Faith is a risk. It's not always easy. Just like I was thinking about in baseball, our coaches, they would sit there every, every time we would go to a practice. All right, when you, when you go to field a ball, put the glove all the way down. Stand this way. Throw that way. Uh, if the sun's in your eyes, this is how you block it. This is how you catch it. When you, when you go to pitch the ball, I want you to step like this and move this way. When, if a person's on this base, this is how you do it. And they would drill these practices into us over and over and over again. We're like, okay, we get it. But then what's interesting is when it came to game time, we would hear the coach's word in our ear. Do this, do that, throw it there, do it this way. And you know what? It worked. Oh my gosh, we got the guy out. Or... Man, we won the game. This is crazy because we did what the coach was saying. And it's the same with, with our life, our spiritual lives. Here, the word is coming forth. I view, I view pastors a lot like coaches. They're on the sideline encouraging you. Hey, do it this way. Throw it that way so you can have success in your, in your journey, in your, in your walk, or in, in the game, rather, of faith. So we're going to talk about that a little bit more. So we got to apply the word to your life or to, to our lives. Um, and when you listen to what God is speaking through the pastors, the man, the woman of God, good things happen. Matthew 7, 24 and 25 says this. It says, these works, words I speak to you are not incidental additions to your life or homeowner improvements to your standard of living. They are foundational words, words to build a life on. If you work these words into your life, you are like a smart carpenter who built his house on solid rock. Rain comes, the river flooded, tornado hit, but nothing moved that house because it was fixed to the rock. When we take the words spoken by, by Jesus, the words preached by different pastors and leaders, when we take the word of God and we apply it to our lives, we build a strong foundation. We have to work the word into our life because like the scripture says, we are smart car carpenters. I don't want to be a dumb carpenter. I don't know about you, but for me, I don't want to be stupid. I don't want to be dumb. I want to apply the word because every time I do, good things happen. 
I've seen it time and time again. Now, let me ask you this. Those of you who have kids, nieces, nephews, grandkids, how many of you want your kids to be smart or your nieces, nephews? Anyone? Everyone wants, there's a few hands not going up. I'm a little concerned about that. Okay. Well, that's interesting. Well, okay. But the reason I'm saying this is because, I don't know, but the upcoming generation, they need to know the word of God more than ever. Because... There's power in the word. There's power in, there's life-changing power in the word. word. This isn't just something that is a good idea. This is a God idea. Because the word of God has power to transform lives. And if they don't know the word, then they don't know what can help set them free. Because the Bible says the truth that you know is what sets you free. But if our, this next generation, if our kids and grandkids, they don't know the word, then they won't be walking in freedom so you have to understand the importance of why the word is so important why talking about faith why coming to church why getting your kids involved in church is a big deal and important is because in getting and having those conversations with your kids or your nieces and nephews about the word of god and what it can do because until they know the word then they will continue to walk around lost confused as captives but the bible says that jesus came to set the captives free and until they know that they're going to walk around bound addicted lost confused not knowing their identity or purpose and it's not until we connect them with the word with jesus that they know their purpose john 17 um sorry john 8 32 says this is the truth you know that sets you free and then john 17 17 this is Jesus' prayer for his disciples, but it's also been my prayer for my, my wife and I's prayer for our kids, but also the student ministry here. And he says this, make them holy by your truth. Teach them your word, which is truth. So you want to know a spot to start of wondering, okay, God, what, what do I do? How do I teach my kids? Make them holy by your truth. And the truth is the word of God, plain and simple. So why is this word so important? Why is it such a big deal? Ephesians 5.25 says this, Christ also loved the church and he gave himself for her that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of the water of the word. The word of God washes, it cleanses, and it gets, we are called the bride of Christ, by the way, the church. And the bride of Christ needs to look beautiful for, for the, you know, the wedding day. Now, the word washes us. It purifies us so that we, the church, can be presented as a glorious, beautiful bride. How do I look? Like Betty. <laughs> right? That's what the Bible says. It says it is cleansing you. So you may have walked in here addicted. Maybe you walked in here lost or your, your marriage is on the rocks. But you begin to apply the word of God to your life. And all of a sudden, things begin to get better ah, i wonder why that is because the word of god works for those who work the word when you trust when you step out in faith when you begin to see god move things happen because you're taking a risk you're letting go of the comfortable which can be chaos can be dysfunction can be all these things and listen dysfunction can feel comfortable for people and some people don't want to let that go but well, we have to trade in our discomfort in our in our in our all the junk and garbage in order to grab the things that Jesus is trying to give us to cleanse us to get get rid of the old and step in to the new. So faith is risk. Risk. Everyone say faith is a risk. Faith is a risk. So let's break it down. Faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. Correct. In other words, faith comes knocking on your door when the word is preached, and you have an opportunity to open that door. And pull on whatever it's trying to give you to stir up the things in your heart or to close the door. It's your, it's your choice. So it comes knocking. The word is preached and we hear that word and we apply it to our lives. We become cleansed so we can be the church. We can be the church when the word of God has worked inside of our hearts. Are you following this? The word church, Pastor Richard has broke this down before. And it's uh, in the Greek, ecclesia which means called out ones, called out ones, separated. The Bible says for us to be in the world, but not of the world. 
Why does Jesus say that? Because he wants us to be called out for action. So to get into the game and see God's kingdom advance and see people saved and set free, we have to be called out and different so we can be an example to people all around us. I don't know about you, but COVID-19, it's a funny word, right? COVID-19, coronavirus. I don't know about you, I'm tired of hearing about it, but words like isolated, quarantined, socially distant became way too normal in our culture. And we got to watch church online in our pajamas or hopefully at least your pajamas. <laughs> eating breakfast. <laughs> Good word. Praise you, Jesus. You know, and we got comfortable sitting there watching online. Maybe you're watching. God bless our online stuff, online services. Thank God for those that are joining and connect. I'm not slamming this. Just hear my heart behind this. We're sitting there online alone. Yeah. Alone. Watching on our phones, watching on our laptops or our computers, whatever. Laptop is a computer. Uh, on, your, on your tablet. You're sitting there alone. But the church, the Bible says we're, we're supposed to gather together. We're gathering to, the gathering together of called out. Gathering together of, not the socially distant of called out ones. Not the isolated, not the quarantined one, ones. We are the gathering together of called out ones for action. Yes, we're being smart. Yes, we're being wise. Yes, we're doing sanitizer and we smell like Purell and all that stuff now, which is great. Look, I like the cleanliness. I like, I don't like germs. I don't want to get sick, right? But we're also not missing the point of gathering together, coming together. My heart breaks when I see churches saying, hey, we're gathering together finally for the first time in a year and a half. And we've been coming together as now church for months and months, and I don't take it for granted. This, this is powerful. So God wants us, you and me, to be in the game together. Teammates, encouraging, praying, and helping one another as one body gathering together. So we are called out to action as a church. It's easy to be sitting on the bench or on the bleachers or in your lazy boy and yelling to those playing in the game. You should have done it this way. You should have threw it there. Come on, tackle him. What's wrong with you? It's easy to be sitting on the couch yelling at people. Here's the thing. There's no action in the bleachers. There's only fans, cheerleaders, and critics. That's the only people sitting in the bleachers. Fans, cheerleaders, or critics. So here's a picture of, of the, I think, bleachers. This is a, a shot of Ben Hill Griff Griffin Stadium from, I mean, these are pretty good seats, right? Those are nice seats, right? Pretty nice. Yeah, so those are pretty nice. But then it's a total different perspective than this next picture here, being in the game. Whole different deal. Because when you're in the game, you're like, I'm focused. I'm going to knock this dude out. You know, whatever. I'm going to make a touchdown. A whole different, pers different, whole different perspective So faith without works is dead. And it's going to be... Ooh, I can do... Yeah. <laughs> 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 Wait, do I do that? <laughs> no, you don't do that. <laughs> That's just me. <laughs> so faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God, right? So faith without works is another scripture uh, is dead. Now, on, on the um, table here, I've got a 15-pound a, a weight. I don't know about you guys, but when the new year rolls around, we get so many ads and commercials saying, get off your fat butt and work out. <laughs> Pretty much is what they're saying, right? Okay, it's just how I hear it. Okay, but 
But they're basically trying to encourage you to get a gym membership, to get active, or your watch is beeping saying, come on, let's get some steps in, or let's, let's, you can do it today. Come on, let's, let's knock these rings out, right? And it's like pushing you, telling you, let's, let's get active, get moving. And so what's interesting is faith, like I was saying in my first point, faith isn't activated until you activate it. You have to make the choice. This weight can do wonders for our bodies and do amazing things, give us muscles that we didn't know we had. And we can sit there and say, man, I'm going I'm to get you. I'm going to work out. I'm going to get strong. I'm going to get buff. I'm going to look good. Oh, man, I can't wait. I'm, and then the next day comes. Yeah, I'm going I'm to work out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this thing. Tomorrow at 2 o'clock, it's my workout time. And then 2 o'clock comes, and you're like, I'm a little tired. I'm going to take a rest for a minute. And then you wake up, 3.45, oh, man, now i got to go pick up the kids. Tomorrow, tomorrow I'm going, I'm going to start my workout. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jog. Tomorrow, you know what, I'm going to wake It's been beautiful out. I'm going to wake up, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run. I'm not even a runner, but tomorrow I'm going to run. <laughs> and then tomorrow comes, and you're like, oh, you know, it's so nice in my bed. You know, so we can come up with these excuses, and things happen, and we keep pushing it, pushing it, and pushing it. Faith has to be activated because the word says without it, it's dead. Like I was talking about, your faith can move mountains, but if it's lying there dormant, it's dead. It's not doing anything. So we have to wake up our faith. We have to wake up our spirit and we have to begin to put in the work. We have to begin to lift the weight. We have to begin to say, okay, today's the day I'm gonna open my Bible and I'm gonna begin to read it. Today's the day I'm gonna take just a few moments before my day gets crazy, I'm going to pray. I'm going to get into the, God, into the presence of God just for a moment. Before things start happening, I'm going to pray for my kids ahead of time. Instead of having to react, I'm going to act in faith and believe and, and speak a hedge of protection around them. So the weights and the workout equipment themselves don't do anything just sitting there. It doesn't do anything. It's not until we activate it. It brings change and transformation to our lives. So the same thing. So when you think of workout equipment, think of faith. And saying that is going to make my life different. And I'm going to be transformed by the renewing of my mind. I'm going to be transformed by knowing the word of God. It's going to change me. So are you actively pursuing God and what he has for you in your life? Because again, you can sit there and God could be calling you. Listen, I've got great things for you. He's calling you over here. I've got all these things for you I've got it for you it's right there I've been telling you since you were a kid I've got that for you but are you willing to put in the work to be the church are you willing to put in the work to be the bride of Christ are you willing to to put in the work to go after what God's calling you to do because it's going to be work it's not easy it's going to be work there's going to be tears there's going to be times when God is dealing with you and then, by the way, there's a scripture that says Jesus is going to be dealing with us until he comes back. So just get used to him poking and prodding and saying, hey, there's some things here that need to change. And it's good because it's who God loves that he corrects. So wherever God's correcting you right now, let him do it. God, you're strengthening me. God, you love me. So are you actively pursuing God? Let's pray this morning. Pray for two different people. First, first group of people I want to pray for right now. And that is to activate your faith. The very starting point is Jesus. Jesus is the reason why we can be saved and to come to the Father. It's by his sacrifice. It's by who he is and what he did for us. But we still have to do some work. We still have to say and humble ourselves. The work that we have to do is humble ourselves and say, I need a savior. I can't do this life alone. 